Hey, what is going on guys? The DK. Back at you with another video here. It's writing the two game NFL preseason slate on Friday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL slates on DraftKings, obviously co covering up uh, preseason. It's been a really, really good start for us for preseason. We'll go over our lineups here in a sec. Uh, if you are unable to watch these YouTube videos, it also up on Apple Podcast. I have a link down below. It's called the DK DFS Show. If you're interested in signing up for premium content, I offer a ton of different packages. NFL package that includes preseason, esports package includes Call of Duty and CSGO, and NBA. But again, we don't have NBA again until October. And uh, I do want to thank today's sponsor, Prize Picks. So, if you guys are not familiar with Prize Picks, they cover every single sport. And I uh, really, really like the platform. So two different ways you can play. First way is you take over under on fantasy points. So again, prize picks will post players and fantasy scores. You either take the over or the under. You can mix and match sports. A couple people have asked me that. So you can play like NFL, a couple NFL with like PGA if you'd like. Or you can go over to single stat and they have like rushing yards, passing yards, receiving yards. You can take over under on those. So if you guys want to try it out and sign up, use the code DKDFS. DKDFS, all one word. I will have a link down below. You sign up using my code, you get a 100% match up to $100. Basically, you put $100 in, you will get a free $100 to play with. And finally, I just want to thank you guys again for all of your support. I uh, had a very nice live stream today. One, uh, we had a lot of Patreon members win some good money on this preseason slate. That is always good to see. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for all coming in, you know, checking out the live streams, the, the videos, you know, supporting on Twitter. Really do appreciate you guys. If you could, leave a like button on the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And hit the notification bell so you don't upload videos. And you know to go live. Again, I'll be doing a general Q&A YouTube live stream before lock. So make sure to check that out, guys. Answer any questions you have. And let's try to aim for 100 likes on this video. All right. So before we talk about players and the prices of this two-game slate, we can look back my my uh, lineup here from the show on slate. So my main lineup in the show on slate just missed the cash and GBPs. A little bit unfortunate. Eagles defense, obviously, negative two. Not what you want to see. And Nikhil Harry getting injured. Oh, I was so tilted about that. Uh, Mac Jones had a beautiful ball up to Nikhil Harry. He dropped it and then gets injured, too. So it's like just the one-two punch, right? Like a 50-yard bomb dropped and then injured, too. If Nikhil Harry catches that, it's probably a massive night for me. Uh, but we had, again, a lot of big wins uh, on pay for Patreon members, so I love to see that. And even though I just missed in the um, in the main slate for GBPs, won it all back in uh, second half and fourth quarter uh, contest. Now, there is definitely an edge here. Like we, we can take a look at one of my lineups here. I, I play a lot of low stakes for these because there's just a lot of dead money, right? People are playing starters in the, in the second half contest. It doesn't make any sense, right? So, for example, J.J. Taylor... Only 60% owned. He should have been 100%, right? He was the one running back that really didn't see any touches in the first half. He was the only other guy that hadn't really, uh, again, got any work at the running back position. So, obviously, he was a clear play New England leading, um, and, like, a third of the field faded him. Um, you know, Gainwell, right? Obviously, a guy that the, the Eagles were thin at running back. He was going to get a decent amount of work in the second half. You know, half the field faded Mac Jones. The defenses, people faded. They're just, like, clear plays on the show on site. So, Definitely an edge there. Again, won it all back and more in the second half and fourth quarter showdowns. So that is really it for the look back, guys. Um, again, if we go over my main lineup, so I want Gainwell in the captain, Mac Jones, J.J. Taylor, Nikhil Harry, Patriots D and Eagles defense. Again, Nikhil, Nikhil uh, Harry injury really held me back. But I had a core of uh, J.J. Taylor, only 30% owned in the main slate, absolutely massive. Kenneth Gainwell, Mac Jones, and the Patriots defense. So really, really solid overall. And let's see if we can keep it rolling for this two-game slate. So we have Bengals and, and uh, Washington football team. It's a 35 over under. Washington are five and a half point favorites. And the Chiefs and the Cardinals, 41 over under. Chiefs are currently three point favorites. As I always say too, uh, we got to keep an eye on news, right? Like today, for example, we got news a few hours before the game started that the Eagles starters weren't going to play a, a ton. Um, and then unfortunately, if you play Jalen Hurts, he actually got scratched after lock. I think he had to go to the hospital, something like a stomach bug or something. So that is very, very unfortunate if you did end up playing. Because he was decently popular. And I was definitely considering on because the rushing upside, he's about 30% owned in higher stakes stuff. So that is unfortunate. But again, always keep an eye on news. Things can change from this video. So let's start off with the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and we'll start at, uh, we'll go quarterback. We'll go position by position. So start with the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. So. The news right now, Andy Mahomes, Andy Mahomes, Andy Reid said Mahomes and the other starters will play a half, somewhere thereabout. So 
Really uh, hard not to like the Kansas City Chiefs starters here with them getting close to a half or if not a full half. Now, one thing I will say, I recall from a couple years ago, two or three years ago, Andy Reid said the same thing for preseason. Like the Chiefs starters were all chalk and then they played like one series. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm almost positive that happened a couple years ago. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you guys, if you remember that two, three years ago, I remember the Chiefs were all super uh, popular in preseason, and like the starters like didn't play or like played like one series when when Reed said they would play like a half. So if Andy Reed is staying true to his word and they play a half, yeah, I mean, how do you not like Patrick Mahomes, right? So obviously one of the top plays at, at quarterback. Let's move on to the uh, Arizona Cardinals. So right now Kyler Murray is expected to play. We don't know the uh, workload. There's rumors it might only be a possession or two, so I'm going to lean Mahomes over Murray if you're going to make me pick. Now, if we do get news that Kyler Murray's going to play a little bit more, then sure. You know, I think he is someone that, that could be viable because obviously he's got that rushing upside too. I will mention Chris Streveler because he is a decent uh, running quarterback. He had like 50 yards in the ground last game. So um, if they are going to limit, you know, a lot of the main guys and Trevler is going to get, you know, kind of the, the mop-up duty, then sure, as a contrarian quarterback play, I don't hate it. On the Cincinnati side, so Joe Burrow, once again, going to be out. But I'm not really looking to any of the backup quarterbacks here for, for Cincinnati. So probably going to pass there. And on the Redskins, uh, four quarterbacks and like Fitzpatrick. Am I going to play Ryan Fitzpatrick when we have Patrick Mahomes and Kyler Murray on the slate? Probably not. So... Um, that is really it for quarterback. Let's move on to running back. We'll start with the Kansas City Chiefs. So uh, Clyde out Trilair, again, uh, starters playing close to a half. I, I think he, he does make for one of the better running back plays of the slate. We know he's a good runner, good pass catcher. We get about a half of work from him. That looks decent. Now, I think guys in the second half you could look to would be like a Darwin Thompson, uh, a Jarek McKinnon. McKinnon has looked good in um, – in practice so far we know both those guys are speedsters and both good pass catching backs so a little bit of interest in them and um Darrell Williams too uh, I think it's fine obviously Monter he had he was a little bit banged up a few days ago uh, but um yeah I think the main interest definitely is is Edward Solaire uh, and then a little bit of uh, McKinnon and Darwin Thompson so on the Arizona side uh again a couple guys banged up Jonathan Ward uh left that last game. James Conner finally got off of uh, the COVID list. So we'll see if he's going to be available for this one. Uh, Chase Edmonds didn't get a ton of work. First game, three carries, 10 yards, and a catch. We'll see if that goes up a little bit. I think he's viable, uh, but not my favorite option. Uh, you know, if, if Conner and Ward both miss here, then I think a guy like Eno Benjamin becomes certainly in play. Good pass catching back. Had a nice week last week, 50 yards and a touchdown. And if they're going to be a little bit thin, I could see him playing a lot in the second half. So uh, Benjamin's the guy I'm looking to there for Arizona. And then uh, if, if we get news that starters are going to play a decent amount, then I think Edmonds is, is for sure in play too. On the Cincinnati side, so um, Joe Mixon, uh, not much uh, interest in him. Um, Samaj Perrine I'll probably pass on too. There, there is a couple guys that I think look decent here. One being Chris Evans out of Michigan. So he had 12 carries for 25 yards and touchdown, but he also had uh, four catches for 33 yards. That's what he's known for. He is a great pass catching back. So um, I do like Chris Evans a decent amount. And then Jacquez Patrick got a ton of work last game. He had uh, 15 carries for 71 yards. So yeah, Patrick, Chris Evans, two guys I'm definitely looking to for Cincinnati. I do think they'll get a decent amount of work once again. Probably a lean to Evans if you made me pick because of that PPR upside. And finally with Washington. So uh, you know, starters like Gibson and even McKissick, you know, the top two guys, I think will get um, a little bit of work. And, and we know both those guys are decent pass catchers, so they're not completely out of play, uh, but might lean towards some some other options here. So Jarrett Patterson is a guy that I think definitely looks like a good option. Had 10 carries for 40 yards. Last game also had three catches on four targets. Undrafted rookie. Um, again, I think he's going to get a lot of work. They cut Lamar Miller. So right now they only have five backs. I don't expect a ton of work for Gibson and McKissick unless we get news otherwise going into tomorrow. So um, I think Patterson is the guy that looks pretty solid there for the Reds, or not the Redskins anymore, the Washington football team. All right, let's move on to wide receiver in the Kansas City side. So you got to like the main guys, right? Hill, Hardman, um, you know, any of the guys at the top of the depth chart, I think look good with them be, being uh, going to play close to a half. So really, really do like uh, Hill again. Hardman probably going to take a, a big leap forward here with no more Sammy Watkins. We know Byron Pringle's a guy that does have some upside. He's fighting for that number three role. Demarcus Robinson in there as well. Really, if you just go to the Kansas City depth chart, like any of these main guys, 
Hill, Hardman, Pringle, Robinson. Um, I think like the top four or five guys all look really, really good. And that's probably what we're going to be looking for mainly with um, with them playing close to half with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, got to really like the Kansas City wide receivers. Moving on to Arizona. So we right now the receivers are a little bit banged up. We don't know how many um, – you know, possessions these guys are going to get. So as far as the main guys goes, like Hopkins, Green, Kirk, I'll probably pass them for, for now unless we get news that they're going to play a lot more. But I think I want to target more of those guys in the roster bubble. Again, like a, a Keyshawn Johnson, a uh, Andre Basilea. Um, these guys are, are probably going to a decent amount of work. Uh, again, a couple other guys banged up too. So uh, more more targeting for, for the Arizona side, uh, guys on the roster bubble. And you can go down and look at the depth chart as well. I can bring that up. So, yeah, we have, again, like Keyshawn Johnson's number five wide receiver. Vesalia is, like, the number eight wide receiver. I don't think the, the main guys will get a ton unless we hear uh, a ton of work unless we hear otherwise. Moving on to Cincinnati. So, yeah, rookie uh, Jamar Chase did have one catch but only played one possession last week. So, um, right now, definitely a riskier target. I think I'm going to be looking towards, uh, again, more of the guys fighting for spots. So, you know, uh, Mike Thomas, he had a decent week last week. Here, let me bring up uh, his stats. So, he had... Two catches for 32 yards on, on three catches. Um, you know, we can go ahead and, and take a look at the Cincinnati depth chart as well. So, right, he's like number five. I think on Tate, Trent Taylor's a slot wide receiver that probably will get a decent amount of work. So, probably the four, five, six guys like Tate, Thomas, Trent Taylor, I'm looking to for Cincinnati uh, at the wide receiver's position. And finally, Washington. So, um, you know, Terry McLaurin did have two catches on three targets last week. We'll see how much, how much work the starters are going to get. If we do get news that, you know, Washington is going to uh, push their starters for, for close to a half, then, yeah, I do like McLaurin a good amount. Definitely, uh, you know, a very, very talented wide receiver. Uh, Humphreys, you know, out of the slot, I'm fine with. You know, he doesn't have the big play upside, but he's a guy that can go out and get you two, three catches in a short amount of time. And you have, you know, roster bubble guys like the Sims, Cam Sims, Steven Sims, Andy G uh, Gandy, Golden, all guys I think are viable options. All right, let's finish up with the tight end position. position. So on the Kansas City side, hard not to like Travis Kelsey, right? Just with that news of playing close to half, great pass catching tight end. So yeah, really, really do like uh, Travis Kelsey. As far as the Arizona tight ends, probably not going to get too much here. Um, Cincinnati, I'm probably going to pass on too. For Washington, I think you make the argument for Logan Thomas, right? Uh, I think everyone's going to play Travis Kelsey. So Th Thomas should be pretty low owned. Um, did have, uh, what, one catch last week. But uh, we know he is uh, going to be lined up a lot in, in the slot. And they use him, again, a great receiving tight end. So a little bit of interest there in Logan Thomas. Now, couldn't you play both tight ends together? Sure. If you want to make your lineup very contrarian, you can. Uh, but I think, you know, the safe option would be definitely three running backs. And as far as defenses go, uh, the defense that I will not be playing is the Cardinals because they're growing up against the Chiefs starters for about a half. So going to stay away from them. Um, I think, you know, the, the safest option at the moment probably would be um, probably would be the Redskins defense with Joe Burrow not going to play in this game. He'll be playing against a bunch of backups. So that's probably the safest way to go uh, if you want to go for an optimal lineup. All right, guys, that is going to do it for the video today. So if you have been enjoying the content so far, would really appreciate it. If you have a like button on the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't upload videos you know when I go live. Again, I will be live tomorrow, so make sure to check out the live stream, guys. I'll do a Q&A, answer any questions you guys have. Thanks again. Have a great night, and I'll see you all tomorrow in the live stream.